everyone welcome back to my channel this is your again from Zaya CG Kimono I'm standing in my, my living room right now um, this video is going to be long I apologize I will try to edit down as much as I can but I'll be basically showing you my whole kimono collection at least the ones I have stored because I have one on my mannequin right now yeah, hopefully you can see it right there so yeah that is all of the mess but you'll see it soon so yeah i, I apologize in, in advance for the length of, of the video this video i um i'm going to show you everything where i store it how it's stored um you can see how i fold things um how i just incorporate um different ways of folding it um in the totoshi uh, when it comes to uh, the totoshi i won't open up every single kimono like i said um this video is going to be really really long um so opening up every single um kimono is going to take too much time um, and the same for all the obi uh, mostly of the nagoya obi that i folded um yeah you will see um random ones where you can't see the design others which have a complete design all over you you can see what they they look like so yeah um I'm not gonna say any more. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you wanna leave a video response with your kimono collection, I'd love to see it. I have kind of this, I don't know if it's girlish or whatever, but I love seeing other people's collections and what they have. So yeah, um, I guess that's all I wanna say. Um, this is kickbacks. Um, grab a snack, grab something to drink because this will be long, like I said. So yeah, um, have fun and I'll see you soon. Okay, so first half is um, the main bulk of my kimono. As you can see, most of them are in Satoshi. Now, I actually have them sorted by formality, except for the top door, which is mostly uh, Juban and uh, coats like Howie, Michiyuki, and stuff like that. As you can see, so that one of the Juban, actually two, actually uh, they're missing. Um, I have them somewhere else because I used them recently. I still have to fold them back up. Um, so you can see, this is my my winter coat, of a Michiyuki, and I actually have three different how here. You can see the blue one, and you have this summer one, and you have this black and white one. I uh, see so you need to fold it in this one differently because so it's folded up oh, a different way than the others. And down below you have my Hikizuri. So you have five in total. There's a sixth one coming, so I'm expecting that one to come in any day by now. Then you have my Homonga here. Now don't worry, I'll get them out after I show you everything in here. These are all my Irumuji, then it goes down to a comma. Now I actually had um, this pile and this pile switched up, but this one and this one, as you can see, this tag is considerably higher than this one because, yeah, it just didn't quite fit in here, so I just switched them up. And this one underneath, this is actually one of my most formal um, Kuru Tomo Soda, Iru Tomo Soda, um, Furi Soda, all, all the ones are combined in here. Now, this closet, uh, yeah, again, from Ikea. You used to hold all of my regular clothing until my humor collection became too big. Now, in this door, it's Mostly regular clothing, but underneath there, I just keep my sugar, both Okobo and then one pair of Keita. Now I have my pair of uh, tatami zoo, I have them out as I use them as regular, uh, well, not flip flops, but yeah, kind of fancy flip flops. Um, well, with these temperatures, is mostly day to day basis. So and then you have this, um, I guess, shelving unit, as you would call them. So right underneath here, they're all my men's kimono. Again, all naturally 
tucked into a tatoshi. Right on top is my yukata. I still need to order some more tatoshi because I didn't have enough. I had like 20, ordered 20 or something, but it definitely wasn't enough. Come here on top. Now these are actually some uh, uchiba that I'm selling to someone. I had to keep them separate. Now these are more Nagoya obi. You know, you'll see the majority of my uh, Nagoya obi collection um, after showing you what is in here. But these were more fancy ones. Uh, some of them came with their own tatoshi, so I just wanted to keep them separate. And you see this, this cargo, and this one, as you can see on, on top. These house most of my, well, not most. Yeah, most of the non shibui obiage, like the chili man ones, the the summer ones, um, again like these, just in the plain ones, and again on top, this shelf holds all of my fukuro obi, and then all of my men's obi. You can see there are a couple more in the back. I have like five or so of them in total. Um, right on top, I hope you can see, those are my two um, hakama. And then this one is a men's hakama, and this one is my regular women's hakama. So yeah, that is pretty much this part of the collection. Now just let me get... Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let me get all of the kimono out and I will show you what they look like. So this is the first tack of kimono that uh, it was seen back in the storage closet. So the first one is the one that you probably saw me recently wearing last week. It's actually my newest yukata I bought last summer. One of the rare purchases that I made from Seoul as I kind of stopped buying from them. It's a really beautiful white and kind of turquoise, like a light blue turquoise color. It has like iris and spider chrysanthemum. Next one. It's a beautiful dark blue color. I still don't know quite, not quite sure what these are. I was told they're like hibiscus, but again, not 100% sure. But then again, I like it a lot because it's really bold. Some more yellow, one of all kinds of flowers. The chrysanthemums, wisteria, bush clover, peonies, even Chinese bell flowers, all kinds of flowers. But this is one of the two, the one the other one you'll see shortly, that has an incredibly wide wingspan. However, the length is not that long. This one is one sixty one centimeters. 1 meter 61 centimeters and the wingspan is like 144 which is crazy wide so I don't know who was where but they had really long arms so this is beautiful binkata style yukata that I got from one of the other Dutch um, kimono members uh, kimono and jack members a couple of years ago I still love it it's really bright and vibrant if you if I wear this you'll see me like coming from afar because it's so bright. So this is the other yukata that has crazy white wings, but this one has a 148. So it's even wider than the, the yellow one. The funny thing is this one has sakura as a motif on the show. Which is doesn't really suit the summary season I guess because it's a spring flower but then again um, so it's like it's such a national symbol that it can be used like year round also this um, this fabric it's not as sheer it's a heavier cotton I guess but it's still really really comfortable it's also quite soft and then the last one I still need to iron this one this is actually one that I've sewn myself like completely from start to finish and I bought the bolt of um, fabric like, 
a couple of years ago, like 2015 or something, but I didn't do a whole lot with it. And at some point I just decided it was time and I wanted to turn it into a gutter. That's the first stack. Now for the second I have oh, all of my men's kimono right here. So you have the first one. This is the summer one that I converted from a women's to a men's. It was actually pretty easy as this is a summer one. So the only thing I had to do was close the back of the sleeves basically. I widened them a little bit, but other than that, it was pretty pretty easy converting. So you have this, uh, this one. Oh, I'm sorry if I don't um, open up this one because sometimes they have really short cords, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to retie them. So as you can see, this is the the heatwear one. Now this one was um, made as a men's kimono. At when I bought it, whatever I had, it's a tuck for of. I think it was twenty centimeters, right in the horizontal uh, back seam. So I, kind of. And, how am I saying this? He, <laughs> I just took it out though, the whole tuck of fabric, and it went from like a hundred and thirty centimeters to hundred and fifty. Now it doesn't quite, reach down to my ankles, but it goes long pretty far. So this is my infamous sand dad kimono. Well, it's the sand dad by now, as I took off the white um, fur edging, the, the fake fur, because I never intended for it to stay um, a sand kimono. I bought it for this luscious red fabric, as you can see, picking up on the camera. Now it's it looks far brighter on the camera than it looks in real life. It's a little bit muted, more muted, but then again, it's luscious red like all over with a very... I'll zoom in, I hope you can see it. Right, there you go. It does pick up a little bit, so you can see the kind of almost leaf-like design on there. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. See? So zoom out again. And this one I got for like ten dollars. It was incredible. A striped one. This one, however, is a perfect length, both length um, and also the wingspan. Actually, it's perfect right on the hip, um, around the hips. Perfect. It's kind of weird to have a perfect fitting kimono, a men's kimono nonetheless, when all your women's kimono are either too short in the terms of length and too um, narrow in terms of wing, uh, width and wingspan. So this is the uh, actual um, the flower one, as you can see here. So this one was um, widened. Yeah, you can see it was actually widened at some point. I don't know where they took the fabric. I assume they took it from the middle and then attached it here. But the wingspan is like crazy wide. I think it was like 155. Either way, it's way too wide for me. But again, you could kind of snuggle up in it when you're wearing it during winter because it's really warm. So it's the next stack, like a huge stack. These are pretty much all my common, like all seasons, summer. They are the ones on the on top. I have my like spring ones, I have autumn ones, my winter ones are in there. So they're pretty much all the season common that I have are in there. So as you know, you've seen me wearing this one at the beginning of the week. So, no need to get into that. So pretty much the ones on, on top are mostly my summer ones. So you have this this pink one with the bush clover. I 
and where's this like grey purple one with quite an like it's not kind of shivery but it's not it's not polka dot either I guess I'll let you decide for yourself I guess yeah it's, it's a really cool design it's a kind of playful design as well So when this is one of the other pieces that I don't really wear anymore. One reason being that it's too short. If I were to wear it again, I might try to convert it to a men's kimono. But otherwise, I just use it on my mannequin. And that's it, basically. It's beautiful, though. Look, uh, I don't know if I, I'm able to show you, but it has the, the patent design on the inside. Ah, there you go. So from the outside, it's pretty much just plain, but on the inside, it's actually the pattern. That's where, yeah, like I said, that's where the pattern is. So then there's this one, which is in good need of of an iron, I guess. It needs to be ironed. This one is that I made myself. I guess myself. One of the few pieces. Like I bought the roll of fabric, bought for it, and then I simply sewed it up. So this is one of my, I guess, more three season one. More like two season. Another that I look at it, but oh well. I use it more usually in autumn and winter. Like all kinds of designs and flowers and whatnot. Just zooming in, as you can see, it's not quite Edo Koma. It's too um, it's too big for that, but it kind of mimics the design. And you have this one. This one is actually one that no one really has seen before. So this one is actually making its debut. I got this one from the lady from Wisteria Gardens when I was at her place. And I I paid for it when I went home. But she was um, kind of decluttering her kimono wardrobe. And this one was big enough for me to wear. And you know, since my style is changing a little bit. I really like this one, and I can't uh, well, yeah, to, uh, wait to try it when the weather gets cold, because at the moment it's like 25 degrees outside, so it's still a little bit too hot. So and then there's this beautiful piece, and this one is more muted, I tend to go for more brighter colours, this one is a little bit more mute compared to the others, it has a beautiful uh, peony rose design on it. It's gorgeous. Spring piece. I, oh. I was hoping this one wouldn't show up too bright because the fabric's actually really shiny. But it's going so far so good. It's really smooth fabric. It has all kinds of flowers on it. Really dreamy design. I guess if, if you are into sort of princess and fantasy styles, pastel styles, you really like this one. Also comes with the fact that the the extra color, the data it is like crazy bright orange. I wouldn't quite call it neo orange, but being in Dutch and Dutch being orange, um, that is the color that will fit. For my country. Yeah, the only thing that I don't like is that it's the fabric is really thick and really stiff. So I still have a little bit of trouble um, wearing this one, but it's gorgeous. We have this, um, this piece, one of my most worn spring pieces. I wear this one at least twice every year, if not more. 
one of them, the early pieces that I bought from Shine when I was still buying from them. I have that one for nearly five years. It's one of the earlier pieces in my collection. After I moved out, my collection exploded. And this one was one of the first I purchased. I call this one Pink Fluffy Unicorns Dancing on Rainbow because it really is that bright and pastel y and rainbow y, bowy, it's unicorn y, I guess. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually has like glitter on it. But it's just absolutely stunning. And I bought it for a steel as well. This one is probably one that everyone wants. These are so versatile, they can literally be worn in autumn, in winter, in spring. Anyone, if it's not too hot, you can pretty much wear this one to any casual occasion that you want. Plus you can wear this one with Hakama. I mean, how much more do you want? Because it's so versatile. This, this one is pure winter. Now, let's zoom you out again. Now this one, it wasn't actually the one I wanted. It's, it might sound strange, but this one, uh, actually, the design was available in a couple of colors. Like, there was an orange one, there was this lilac one, there was a pink one, there was a blue one, and I even think there was a yellow one. But it's been a few years, and I can't exactly remember if there was a yellow one or it was a white one. But I initially wanted the light blue one. As you know, blue is my favorite color. And I wasn't able to get it one uh, in the color that I wanted, and somehow I ended up with the light, the lilac one. I guess because I couldn't get the the one that I wanted. I do remember these uh, selling out very, very quickly. That I just wasn't able to get my hands on it, and it finally settled for a lilac one. So this one I actually got from a friend when I was in London. She doesn't live in London anymore, but I got this one while she was too tall for it, and when it, the kimono was too long for her, she wasn't long enough. So I uh, tried it on, and I really liked it. So I, I took it with me, and I've loved it ever since. It's like a sort of um, spring kimono, but as it has all kind of leaf design, I guess you could wear it in autumn. So this is one that I'm not quite sure whether it's a common or whether it's an Irimuji. The uh, point is, it's, Irimuji don't have any dyed designs, they tend to have only woven designs, aside from their main background colour. This one, however, does have a more dyed design, it has like all different colours, however, it kind of has an Irimuji feel, so it's kind of in between. I guess you could call it a more fancy Como. It's like this really soft and lush um, satin fabric, like Rinzu, the satin weave. Oh, this one is a really bad need of an iron, I can see them right there. So this is again one of my more, more favourite ones of all the other Como guys. Like these, um, Pokuri, there's Okobo, and then like Asakura and, and whatnot. So, yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of lilac, pink, blue, and don't have much of other colors. So, the last one of the the Como is this rose one, one bought of in Italy, brand new. I've seen this one pop up on Instagram as a rental piece a couple times. That's one of my more favorite. It's actually a really bold one. Like with the, the rainbow one, you can actually see. Or was it the the big cut or yukata? You can actually see someone else coming from a, a very far distance if they would have just one on. It has this really, really bold design. It's time to unfold the Iromuji stack. Beginning with. This one, uh, this is one of my summer ones. So the uh, beautiful like, navy royal blue color. This is the the other one. It's a gorgeous red. This one is actually the one that I wore when I was in uh, Krakow in Poland. 
award for uh, two, diff uh, two different occasions. And what I like about it is that it's really, really airy. If you look at that, and you can see right through. Now the next one is one of the one or two <laughs> heatwear pieces, like the unlined pieces, as we tend, to, at least in, in my country, tend to go almost straight from uh, lined to unlined weather, like summer weather actually. I don't really have a purpose or need actually for unlined pieces as it just goes straight from lined to summer pieces. Sometimes in April it gets, in one week it's 15 degrees and a couple of days later it's 25 degrees. So <laughs> You do just tend to go from lined to somewhere straight away. So this is one of the few pieces, well, like one, one or two pieces that I have that is still unlined. All the others are sold off. Oh, this purple one. Oh, this one, this one was such such a surprise. When I got it, I didn't realize that it was incredibly wide like almost 30 centimeters too wide for my hips. I had to send this one in uh, to Japan to have it fixed because I couldn't wear it. Like the actual back seam was sitting on almost my hips instead of the, the back because it was so wide. Like the actual wingspan is 146 so I can see why it was so wide but it was way too wide for me. <laughs> I bought it for like, for under twenty dollars, so it wasn't that much of a big deal. I mean, otherwise I would have spent way more money on it. So it was pretty much worth it. And same with this piece. This is one of the, the third kimono that I got, I think. Third or fourth. Like I wore this one to a meetup once. I had had contact with a lady who made um, mini kimono like that big about 30 centimeters or so, 35 and when I arrived I w was wearing this kimono and the lady herself I I don't think she was 150 centimeters tall maybe around that but she wasn't tall and me being one meter 80 centimeters or six feet she was almost a full head um, shorter than me so when I turned up she was literally looking up and down and she couldn't understand how I was able to create an or show you well this piece is actually 165 centimeters long she even lifted up, up my or show to see if I hadn't cheated so it's been, it's been five years almost five years next month since that meetup but still it, it brings that back that memory and this is another piece with kind of unknown origins I don't know if I can maybe I should show you this one this one has really long sleeves Just a little bit like look at the length of that uh, the sleeves I have no idea who wore this piece? It's too big to be a child's um, size, or even teenage size. The, both wingspan and uh, length are way too long. So I don't know who wore this piece, but it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I guess this one is one of, out of the other ones. One of my more treasured Iromuji, as I was looking for one for such a long time, and I finally found it. It has actually a great size, and it's, I really like wearing it. Plus, I mean, how gorgeous is that color? I mean, come on, you, you just have to agree with me that this is just an amazing color. And for me, being so long, even with the minimum mes uh, measurements that I have, even finding such um, such a beautiful, rich color is difficult. They're either too small, like usually, or too expensive, and this one was perfect. So it is time for my homongi, all of them. This is one's a pink one. Uh, I need to um, take it uh, take it out completely, but this actually has a, a Chaya City um, design. 
like with all kind of tea houses. As you can, you can see right there, so there's like tea houses and, and whatnot, so all, the all season design, which is great. Sadly, um, oh yeah, so this piece is actually one that will come closest to my ideal measurements. Like this one is 178 centimeters in length. The wingspan is around 140, which is not the most ideal, but it's perfect enough for me. You can get away with a uh, final few centimeters. This one is... I guess one of the more more lucky ones. Now it has like a this size stain somewhere. Uh, I think around the back of the shoulder somewhere. I don't know if it... Oh, yeah. there you go. Uh, this one's the smaller one. This one's just that big. There's another somewhere that's bigger. Oh yeah. So this piece has this gorgeous like peach blossoms I think they were this is actually a pure royal blue like I can't describe it anything else than this really rich royal blue color with a sort of off-white uh, flowers on it and on on the hem it has this beautiful I don't know if you can can see it right here, but oh yeah, there you can see it slightly. It's a beautiful orange color, like the color, contrasting color. It's beautiful in real life. The only issue, however, that I have with this one is that the colors are too long on either side, so they stick out um, about that much from my hips. I do have this issue with most of my kimono, but this one tends, it's really visible. Out of the entire stack, this one's my favorite. It's gorgeous. I need to open it up. Oh yeah, this beauty. This is just one of my favorite, if not the most favorite homogi that I have. It wears like a dream, even though it's technically too small for me, but then again, 99% of my collection is. Okay, the second to last is this beautiful blue-grey homongi that has like these maple leaves and these are bamboo leaves and some, some more. Uh, I hate this one in terms of the, the fabric. It's really slick and I don't get to stay it in place. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it just does not stay in place. Every time I try to wear it, the colors loosen up the moment I put on my obi. I have no idea how. Ooh, it's, that's what just bumped you guys. It also has this beautiful gold design. You can see right there. It even has embroidery on the hem. Oh yeah, now I remember this one. This is yeah one of the other pieces that I like said that I don't really wear. This is my spider web kimono that I actually painted myself. Let's see if I can get the sleeves out. Because apparently, many people think it's cute. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, I guess because I put a smile. But yeah, you can see I even painted a spider on it. But I sadly can't wear this piece as um, the thread that it was sewn with is breaking apart with the slightest tension. So even if I would try to wear it, it would and the cause the actually the panels to well not quite fall apart but the thread would actually loosen up and would make gaps so 
So it's kind of sad, but I still uh, put this one on my mannequin every single year and I still incorporate it in the Kimo November challenge. So this is the second to last hug. I had to put on some lines because it's actually getting a little bit dark here because of the clouds. So this is one of the, my formal snacks. So it has like this beautiful cold fruity sweater, which is actually, well, I think it was my second kimono ever. So this one has been with me for a very, very long time. It has this part shibui and uh, like chrysanthemum, the kind of chrysanthemum. It's a really pretty autumn piece. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is my rainbow foodie soda. Like actual, it has actual rainbows on uh, on it. So, oh, excuse me if you can hear it outside. There's actually kids playing. Um, like well, kids. I think they're teenagers. So I live in in the town centre. Uh, this is a treasure. When I was hunting, was hunting down for five years i think maybe a bit more but i've always wanted a shibori furi soda i just couldn't find one that was in the right price um category and had the good measure well, good measurements for me that is with my uh, long body and this one is a whopping 175 centimeters with a crazy 142 wingspan so I don't, yeah, it's not perfectly ideal when in terms of, uh, when it comes to sizes, but it's enough. It's my favorite um, color. It's chibi, it's just all goodness, and it even has like beautiful peonies on it. So, it's, so now we're getting into the. Edo told me so there. So those how we have the design on the hem. But this one is actually resembling an actual or not, it used to be an historical event but now it's reenacted every single year. So what they do on this event, um back in the Heian period they would have this event and they would write poetry while sake cups would float down the streams here. Yeah? So, Zoom in a little bit so you can see the stream. Now the beauty of this piece is that the design is completely woven. Every bit is, is woven. So it's a really... I guess I didn't pay a whole lot for it, but I don't know how much it would have costed if this piece were brand new. This is actually... Uh, a, I don't think you can see, but it's actually a beautiful royal purple. Now uh, this is a kind of that is has a little bit of trouble picking up how beautiful it is. This 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 design compared to the last one is completely dyed. Even those specks you can see are completely dyed with paint. That's one of the things I like so much about kimono because they're incredible in terms of artistic skills. Sounds like a huge peacock design. There you can see all the peacock feathers there. Now this piece is really really heavy I guess I'd have to weigh it again but this piece is at least the same weight as my first word so and nearly two kilos because it has like this fake um, lining it doesn't have the lining throughout just on, on the skirts on the collar and here on the cuffs but that's what makes it really heavy it's also really really heavy to wear so this is going to be the final um, few kimono that I have, although I have a, one uh, yukata on my mannequin right now. But these are pretty much all my hikizuri stacked up. Now not 
all of these I can actually wear trailing like they should because of the size and whatnot but they I really have difficulty um, folding uh, them up this one has beautiful a bamboo design on on the hem uh, as you can see it's like i said i have trouble keeping them folded this is this is the beautiful heat away one i keep the ob in here as well that i bought specifically for it so it has, it's this um beautiful like grass kimono I hope you can actually see it. So there you go, that's much better. So and they, here you have my very first you see now, I hope I can show you yeah. So this is the the light blue one. It's really, really thick, so I kind of have a hard trouble keeping it in the place. But yeah, this is a beautiful light blue color. Oh yeah, so this is the one kimono that started it all. This is my Michael Hikizui, genuine Michael Hikizui. The one that I named my page after because it has a Shayatsuji pattern or design actually it's incredibly stained as you can see but nonetheless I love it so much that I just don't want to get rid of it ever <laughs> yeah and then this is last one my longest kimono This one's a two and a half meter long hikizui, and I've com sewn it completely by myself. So it has like well, this patchwork design where you have one side that is completely the same color. Um, I need to zoom in for this. See, um, so it has all these different fabrics all throughout the the hikizui because yeah, I wanted to kind of make a patchwork and I've seen more like these but they had just two colors one on each half and I wanted a little bit more so I just picked up different panels of fabric and I stitched them together into a hikizui and now I will need to put away all these and then I'll go on and show you where I have stored all of my uh, almost all of my Nagoya obi